So we're in Porter's Lake with Jeff Webster. It's a pleasure to see you, sir. Good to meet you. An XJ... XK. XK120. I am totally unfamiliar with a lot of things, but this is an engine and a pretty body, and this is technology from 1950 that is just at home in 2020 now. Absolutely, yeah. Actually, it was a, it's a XK, which was um, developed during um, the Second World War. Mm -hmm. It was an experimental engine in the K version. Okay. And uh, this car was developed to um, show off uh, the engine in the 1948 uh, Geneva Motor Show. Um, what can I tell you? Uh, the, the, the car never intended to reach the popularity that it did. Mm -hmm. um, they only intended to build 200 of them. And the, two, the 200 number was uh, uh, so that they could call it a production car so it could be displayed in uh, the Geneva Motor Show. Okay. Uh, I think they sold, you can't quote me, 1,200 mm. that weekend. Wow. So they had to go back and, and do some redesigns and, and change their, their plans because the first 200, uh, uh, actually the first 234 of these cars were completely alloy body. So an aluminum body, they called it alloy. Alloy. So that changed when they had to meet production numbers. Exactly. Where did this car come from? <laughs> How did that happen? Actually, a friend of my father's owned it for years and anticipated restoring it. Wasn't going to get around to it. He sold it to another guy who dragged it from house to house to house for, I think, probably 18 or 20 years. And finally threw his arms up and said, my wife's had enough. My father had just finished a 1949 Jaguar uh, Mark V drophead coupe. And you see some pictures of it. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the car gang in Alberta said that has to go to dawn. So, and that's your uh, father? My father. And what was his vocation? What did he do? My father was an engineer, an engineer's engineer. So yeah. um, when he got this car, it was, it was in boxes and on a trailer. Uh, it was a basket case. So Literal basket case. But and most importantly, every piece of it was, it was there. It was all there. So yeah. it's, a, it's a matching numbers car. Just remarkable that that history was preserved, and not only preserved, but re resurrected. Resurrected. And my, brought back. My father was uh, uh, such a details-oriented individual. Now, this car, the grill did mm. not have all the parts to it. Okay. Well, the, the grill, each one of the slats, mm. in 1949 and 1950, actually had a, had a ridge along each slat. Mm -hmm. And about 1952, 50, uh, 51 probably, the dies to make that ridge wore out. Okay. All subsequent slats, right up to including the Mark II, were, were a smooth slatted face slat. Right. right, okay. So dad, in, because this is a very early car, put the word out and talked to Whomever, whomever, wherever, and each slat is different. As you know, you have the long slat in the middle, and they yeah. they get shorter and shorter and shorter. And he came up with a full collection of uh, grooved slats for a 1950 XK120 grill. Uh, so the this is this on all of these cars, this particular badge, on the we, 120s. Okay, because yes. I know sometimes with British cars, other things are added as far as badges or maybe car club uh, memorabilia or signature. XK yep. is sports car. XK is sports car. XJ mm -hmm. is saloon. Okay. XK's never got the leaping cat. XJ's did, the saloons. With the exception of uh, the XK150, some, some of the XK150s had the cat uh, okay. installed on the, on the bottom. Now, as far as the lights, I'm going to guess they're not quite like modern lights, not quite as bright, maybe not as much... No, they're a filament light bulb. Right. Um, but uh, there's quite an interesting story behind these. Tell me more. Um, the, the, the bowls on mm. these are silvered. Right? Right. This tri bar is chromed. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Dad actually took these that were manufactured in the UK in 1950 and he made a mount in plywood mm -hmm. uh, because all the silver was tarnished, of course. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's one chrome ring, another chrome ring that leaves, and then you're left with this pressed fit uh, bowl with the glass. So he actually he cut, he cut this ridge, not on this ring, but on the other ring, probably 80 times, walked all the, walked all the tangs over, lifted the glass out, took the tri bar out, had it re-chromed, and had the bowls sent to Winnipeg to be re-silvered. Right. He made well, his own I, sealed beam. Uh, no, and then there's a bulb in the back. And the bulb in the back. Yeah. But he did that one, two times. Yeah. Uh, twice for the, for the uh, fog lamps. Another set for a friend of ours. <laughs> plus another set as a spare. I have one and, and my, my friend Brian has the other. This car was built like a model. Right. Right? Um, the, the, the frame went to the frame shop three times to get pulled and twisted. And, mm -hmm. and he had all the markings. It, there was no such thing as a laser in 1991. Yeah. Um, he had markings on the floor and he had strings and he had tape measure. And until that frame was exactly the way he wanted it, nothing it wasn't else done. happened. It wasn't done. I really got to look under the hood now. I think it's time. You want to look under the hood? I think it's time. Are you ready? <laughs> I think it's time to open the present right. to its entirety. There's an art to this without banging it. Now bear in mind yep. the way he did his work. Okay. Okay. Oh my. I suspected as much. Pretty on the outside, even prettier on the inside. Now, um, this is not original. Right. But these things notoriously would overheat. Mm -hmm. So even, even in a concourse uh, judging, uh, this is allowed. Okay. The later model, uh, the, this is the 120, the later, the 140s actually had a broader uh, radiator and it was actually sloped. Okay. So it gave you more uh, square inches of radiator. What we're looking at here is a 3.8 liter. This is a 3.4. 3.4 liter, straight six, double inline six. Cam. Straight six, double overhead cam. Another early um, indication of these cars. Mm -hmm. This was called, for some reason, a studless cam cover. Okay. Uh, all the subsequent cars had, had an extra nut here to hold this down and keep it from leaking. And they were always those acorn nuts. That's just the, yeah, the finished look right from the mm -hmm. Right from the factory. This is very, very uh, correct and original, including the, what they call the tall, tall neck um, carb pots. Mm -hmm. These are H, H6 carbs. Um, probably Ooh. by 1951 or two, it was a short, stubby carb, similar to over there on the wall. Okay. But dual carbs. Dual carbs, SUs. Headers, so. Well, actually, this they're not oh, a it's header. A, it's a manifold. Okay, I it's, see it's, that now. It's, yep. it's, a, it's an enameled manifold. Right. And um, there's actually a company, I think, in Pennsylvania that re-enamels these manifolds. And you have, to, um, you have to warm them up, cool them down, warm them up, cool them down. If, if, you, if you install them and, and go out and tear up the roads, they heat up too quickly. Okay. They cool down too quickly, and the enamel breaks off and flakes away. So you have to season them in a way. You have to season them like yeah. a cast iron frying pan. Uh, luckily, these have actually uh, survived quite well. You know? Well, I think we should uh, take another look around the other side. We've got to get a whole view of this car because it's pretty oh, it, coming and going. It, it keeps going, huh? It keeps Absolutely. going. Absolutely. So I don't know what you have to do here to shut it up or button it up. Just like that. Just like that. Like just every view of this car is gorgeous and, and you can see the lines, it's so aerodynamic. And you call these what, spats covering the tires? These are, these are wheel spats. 
And the idea is, well, I know from a tractor with an orchard model, so the branches don't get in. I'm ex I, I don't think that was, I don't think that was the case. Um, <laughs> I, honestly, I think I think this harkens back to to the um, the, the pre-war cars hmm. that all had spats. Really, um, okay. if they had steel wheels. If you had wire wheels, spoke wheels is what they called them, mm -hmm. then the spats came off. Um, but but this was a very early car. Uh, like I said, I don't even think there was any intention of, of really producing this in mass numbers. Right. So it just took a lot of the um, um, uh, design uh, facets from the older cars, I guess. So what's up underneath here? Well, here's another Don Websterism. Okay. And I'll show you. Um, uh, inside this trunk is the was the, the boot. The boot. And, and it holds the spare tire. Oh, there. But um, and your luggage already packed and ready to go. So it'll hold a little bit more than a toothbrush. Now, what my father did was he found um, the plant. Oh, and there's another things. one there too. Okay. And on there's top two of that them. one, you think that that's it? Yeah. But. They're his and hers. And they fit perfectly. They are designed to go in there. Well, he doesn't need as much clothing, so you're just about right there. And that was your dad made these, manufactured these. Dad and dad made these right from scratch, based on, and then had them upholstered. There we go. Beautiful. I know some of the first cars had wooden frames. You have a bunch of pieces here from cars that look to be dashes, dashboards, and I'm of the understanding that you're quite a woodworker, that you get a lot of satisfaction, kind of like your dad, out of <laughs> taking something that needs some help and love and restoring it back to the way it was. I can't work with metal, but I can work with wood. Um... Yeah, I've I've restored I've restored the, the uh, all the dashwood in my Mark II with, okay. with my uh, with my father's help. Yeah. Um, what you see here are um, replicas, two replicas. This is this is from a, an, a, a Triumph TR6, mm -hmm. uh, and it actually is is a replica made from a template that I have uh, with the Circassian curly walnut, if if you care. Okay. Um, and I made that for myself, but I've restored uh, three or four TR6 dashboards for various clients. Open to cedar, that's a designation from the factory. Correct. And this one, it does have a, a top. It does have, uh, what's it called? A hood. A hood, well a hood's this, right this there. This is the bonnet. Oh, that's the bonnet. Bonnet, boat, and a hood. <laughs> so uh, how does, is, I mean, it's gotta be mechanical or, Physically, yeah, there, there's no button. There's no button here, Sean. Okay, okay, <laughs> fair enough. So how does it go up? You want to see it up? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, you're gonna have to help. Okay, what do you need me to do? All right. Still pretty looking. It is. Even covered up a little bit. And then you said there are another, I'm not asking to put it in, but there's another piece that would go I'll, sh I'll show you one. Do you want to see it? Yeah, okay. Well, I'm here. Ta-da. And to open the door. Oh, right. <laughs> Got to slide in through there. Well, I think uh, now that I made you do all that, we should put it all back together and go for a drive. Should we take the top down and go for a drive? Hey, that's a perfect idea, Jeff. Why don't we do that? How, <laughs> that's a great idea. How can I help you? <laughs> Let me think. Uh, magic of television. <laughs> doodle -doo, doodle -doo. We're done. <laughs> so there it has. That, this Jaguar car is an exact replica of the record-breaking car, which achieves a speed of 132.6 mph in Belgium in May of 1949. 132, yep. That's a lot of... You're using all of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna kill, a, kill the uh, choke. Oh, okay. Oh, that is...
this car uh, since 2004, 2002, I guess, yep. has had uh, 1,349 miles on it. Right, so it was reset? Yeah, when you had the, when you had the speedo uh, redone. So you would, you, you, any idea how many miles were on it when your dad started, just hauled it out of the barn and started work? Somebody said, well, how many miles were on the car? Well, there's, there's 1,349. Everything, everything is redone. Everything's yeah. been redone. Right. Right? Taking me through time and space and history. And I tell you what, the uh, the uh, automatic choke yep. is like a D-cell battery, and there's a piston, and, it, and when you engage it, it pulls up and allows air and gas to to uh, supercharge the, the carburetors. Right. Tell you, if that is not working, this car is not starting. Okay. Anyways, two or three days ago, wah, 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 wah. anyways, I took the the, the uh, thing out and I, I charged it with the I hit it. I hit it with 12 volts. Yep. Up it went, right? So I put it back in and what about a fire right up? So a couple of days ago, two days ago, I went to start it. Blah, 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 blah. I went to pull it out and the little piston that goes. Yep. It uh it was stuck in the it was gum. You know, oh. the little old gas leak? Yeah. It was stuck in place. So it wouldn't start. Of course I'm out, I'm out here in the garage. This morning, 7.30, let's see if the car's gonna start. <laughs> well, she did. Oh, yeah. Start and go. Yep. Style and luxury. Race, pace, and space. This is uh, Jaguar's three uh, Was it? words. Well, not much space. I was gonna say, not a lot of space here. Where's the space? The grace and pace for this one. Yep. Forgive me if it's too personal, but you talked about sobriety. Oh. Taking that path. <laughs> Every man's allowed to drink a certain amount of alcohol in the course of their lifetime, and I exceeded my limit when I was 28. Okay. <laughs> you know what? Um, God, you know, I got friends that have been sober for 38 years and have been to AA three times a week, and you yep. know, Yep. I don't go to AA. I don't make up in Mel Night with him. Cole's answer. Yeah, I'm really lucky. Mm -hmm. I think um, uh, my sister always said, I may, not have been, I may not have been an alcoholic, but I have, you know, uh, obsessive compulsive or addictive personality, right? Right. Uh, I'd love to be able to have a gla glass of wine, a bottle of wine with my wife, but you know what? It just ain't worth it. Yeah. I'd like to have another cigarette again. Right. But that ain't happening. Yeah. You know? Just uh, and uh, yes, I'm I'm eternally you know everything everything bad that ever happened to me was has, had to do with alcohol. Right. And everything that good has happened to me is since I quit. So I mean it's pretty pretty much a no brainer. You know? Yeah, yeah. And I've had people say, oh you know, go talk to my wife. Or you talk to my husband. And I said, you know, if they want to come and talk to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no problem. But I said, there's no, and I'm here to tell you from first hand experience, there's no sense in me going and talking to them about nothing. Right. They have to. They have to need it. They have to want it. And, and until somebody says they need the help, they won't take the help. Yeah. What is the future for this car? What are you going to do with it? What do you think is its, it's history beyond oh, you? Why don't you ask my daughter? <laughs> Does she have any interest? Oh, she does them all. Yeah? Yeah. And has she driven them? No. Why? No. Well, Why she's she's just, well, number one, uh, with the insurance, the car insurance. Okay. They have to be at least 25. Right. But she will drive them. Uh, but my God, I mean, she, you know. The reason I got the E-Type mm -hmm. uh, was, you know, the gentleman, the gentleman passed away and uh, willed it, willed it to his daughter, mm -hmm. uh, and before he died, he says, you know, you're getting this E-type, yep. and if you can't afford it, don't want it, can't keep it, you need to give Jeff Webster first dibs on it. Okay, and that's what so happened. So she said, you know what, I, I, time in my, at this point in my life, 
She says, uh, actually, she interviewed, she's out west, right? Yep. She interviewed my buddy. She says, what kind of guy is Jeff Webster? And, you know, oh, really? Dad yeah. told me that he, but, you know, is, is he going to look after the car? And he goes, oh, my God. He says, look at these pictures of the car she <laughs> built. And uh, I already had the 120, and I had the Mark II. Yep. She says, he said, you know, Sally, it couldn't go to a better place. Mm-hmm. And, and that guy has wanted your dad's car since he was 13 years old. Oh, wow. Can you imagine booting down the highway doing like 110 in this thing? With no seat belts. No seat belts. I mean, well, it, do would you want a seat belt? Like no. If something happened, no, do you want I, a seat belt? In I'd want to get thrown clear. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Now, your dad had a, a passion for fixing and restoring, and did he like to drive? Did, was he... Did... He did, but you know what? Um, he didn't want to take these out. No? He bought a, he bought a, a Triumph TR4A. Uh, figuring he'd take that to, you know, the, the not the car meets, but the you know cars and coffee, and yep. you know, going to meet all the boys on Saturday morning. Never really drove that. Ended up selling the silly thing. Mm. You know, uh, he was more interested in the detail and the engineering and making these things. Right. And did your mom share any passion for the automotive stuff? No. You know what? Other than the fact that uh, I don't know how many times they went to California looking for parts. Yeah. She liked that part. <laughs> That's not a far drive from Alberta. As someone who grew up on the prairies, you don't get anything like that out west. Not that part of out west. Which? This. Oh, I know it. I know it. Actually, when you're coming across uh, Lake Echo, next yep. 18, that reminds me of my grandparents. It's the Great Canadian Shield, right? The yep. rocks? Yep. Um, oh, my God. I think I want to move here. I've, I've, I've worked in a lot of places all over the planet. Yep. And Halifax is one of the few places where I said, I'd move here. Now, so you must have some torque to be able to keep that there in second. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jeff, thank you so much for this adventure. And for this conversation. It was a ball, man. And for this trip down uh, the path that I call Maritime Machines. Well, I'm glad to have been a part of it. Connecting 1950s technology with this Modern century's age. Yeah. fun. No, it's a lot, of, a lot of fun. It's a beautiful car. Uh, it's lucky to have you in your life, in its life. <laughs> <laughs> Mutual. It's mutual. Fantastic. Dad would be proud. Dad, Dad would really be proud to, to, to see uh, a special man on it. I agree. Sure.